Good day to you, and what an important day it was for the likes of Germany. No, we'll get to them later. But first, I'm Adrian from Robota TV, and welcome to World Cup Daily. Yes, daily. We do this every damn day, so you should subscribe if you're into daily World Cup content. Said content is starting with Group F in this video. Group F's first match of the day saw Mexico taking on South Korea. Korea, Republic, same thing. And with a victory, Mexico could put one foot in the next round. Korea clearly did their homework in this one as they did well to shut down Mexico's counterattack for the most part. And with Mexico not having as many clear-cut chances going forward as they did against Germany, it seemingly worked. In fact, Mexico in the first half only had a couple of clear-cut chances and found their breakthrough via a Carlos Vela penalty in the 26th minute. That penalty was the 14th taken at this World Cup, which already beats the entirety of 2014, where 13 penalties were awarded. Thanks VAR, even though you still miss a lot of penalties. In the second half, Korea did their best to keep up with Mexico, but they never looked a threat going forward. While their midfield would win some battles, Mexico were just far superior to their Asian counterparts. So. Korea began fouling like crazy, much to the ire of Juan Carlos Osorio. Then Javier Chicharito Hernandez scored a historic goal in the 66th minute, as he took his goal count for Mexico up to a half century with his 50th. Not only was he the top scorer in Mexican history already, but by extension became the first Mexican player to score 50 goals. However, in the lead up, Herrera fouled key, but the referee missed it. The goal shouldn't have happened, but hey, both the ref and VAR missed it. 2-0 and Mexico were cruising at this point, considering Korea, as I said, rarely ever posed a threat to the Mexican goal. But in the 93rd minute, Hyung Min Son finally made a breakthrough for Korea, scoring their first of this tournament, and what a goal it was. But it wasn't enough as Mexico took their record to two wins from two matches and sit, at least for the moment, at the top of the Group F table. Germany versus Sweden and the picture couldn't have been clearer in this one. For Sweden, a win and they are through. For Germany, a loss and they would be knocked out of the World Cup. Just another former champion claimed by the curse of the World Cup winner. And Germany came out with a lot of attacking intent in this one, looking dangerous from the outset, with Marco Reus starting instead of Mesut Ozil and making an immediate impact. However, the first bit of controversy came by way of a penalty not being awarded to Sweden. Marcus Berg was in on goal one-on-one -on -one with Manuel Neuer when he was bumped from behind by Jerome Boateng, who was bumping everyone out there, and he subsequently couldn't have finished off his opportunity. Very lucky for Germany to not go down due to a penalty in that moment. But no matter for Sweden, as they took the lead a little later through the former Sunderland man Ola Toivinen. Stretching to finish, he was able to loop the ball over Neuer and into the back of the net to put Sweden ahead. Amazingly, just speaking of Toivonen a bit here, Toivonen didn't score a single goal from 23 matches this season, and in the World Cup, he scores one with his second shot. Certainly didn't look like a player who rarely scores with that kind of finish. However, in the second half, Germany had to get a win in this match, and they threw everything at the wall. Eventually, in the 58th minute, something stuck, with Marco Reus scoring the first goal of this World Cup tournament for Germany, with what was Germany's 35th attempt on goal. And then, the Boateng incident. Boateng eventually got sent off due to his terrible tackle on Marcus Burke. It took the referee a long time to give him the yellow though, which is a bad look for the referee, as it seemed like he let someone else influence his decision. It was the right call, but it looks bad when he takes so long to make the decision, as we all know because we are geniuses. The referee can't consult VAR for yellow card offenses, only for ones that are deemed to be a red card. So we know that he didn't have VAR in his ear for this decision. So it must have been the linesman who said something because the referee was waving players forward for the free kick and then gave the second yellow to Boateng. Bizarre. Not many complaints from Boateng though, he seemed to know his fate. And just when Germany looked down and out, Tony Cruz hit an absolutely unstoppable strike from a free kick. Not directly, as Royce set the ball for Cruz in a position where he had a better angle to curl it past the outstretched keeper. What a way to mark the 95th minute though, with one of the very last kicks of the game. And I believe the latest that Germany have ever scored a winner in a World Cup match. So, Germany somehow end up the 2-1 winners, despite the fact that they again weren't overly convincing. In fact, Toni Kroos was a perfect representative of the German team as a whole. Didn't do much during the game, then one moment of brilliance drags your team over the line. But isn't that what football is all about? Moments of brilliance setting teams apart. So what does this mean for the table? Well, first of all, it looks like this. Mexico in first with six points. Germany follow up in second with three. 
Sweden are also on three, but fall to second due to head-to-head -head results. And Korea are all but eliminated at this point. So this was the worst result possible for Mexico. Had Sweden gotten the draw or the win, they would have advanced. With Sweden now fighting for their lives against Mexico in the next match, if Sweden were to win in Germany as well, Mexico's place could be in danger. Germany will like their chances against Korea, but if this World Cup has taught us anything, you can't count anyone out on a match-by-match -match basis. Nothing is guaranteed in this year's tournament, and I think that's why it's been one of the best World Cups in recent memory. Add to the fact the record for consecutive matches without a 0-0 draw has been smashed, the drama from VAR decisions, etc. It's been a good watch. This Saturday morning, we were treated to an absolute goal fest between Belgium and Tunisia. Now we had Russia beating up on Saudi Arabia and the 3-3 draw between Spain and Portugal, but this was the first match to hit seven in a single sitting. The scoring was kicked off by Eden Hazard in the sixth minute from the penalty spot after he was taken down. There was some debate as to whether it was inside or outside, but I think the right call was made. Just 10 minutes later, Belgium struck again, this time through Romelu Lukaku, as Lukaku took his major tournament goals tally up to six, which equaled Jan Kuleman's record. Damn, is he ever prolific for his country. Just 109 seconds after Lukaku scored, Dylan Braun, yes, that is his name, as English as it sounds, pulled one back for Tunisia and perhaps had us thinking, could they do it? Could they make a real contest out of this? Well, Lukaku wasn't interested in a close match, and in the first half stoppage time, Thomas Mounier played him through with a beautiful diagonal ball, and Lukaku's finish was superb. Dinking it over the stranded keeper, 3-1. With that goal, Lukaku took his goal count to four at this tournament, and seven at major tournaments in general, the first Belgian to reach that number, and became the first player to have consecutive multi-goal games at the World Cup since Maradona in 1986. So yeah, Lukaku is fighting with Ronaldo for the golden boot, with four apiece. And four is the most that any Belgian player has ever scored at a World Cup. And just after the half, Eden Hazard finished off his brace with a cool little touch around the onrushing keeper and a finish into the empty goal. This victory was always comfortable for the Belgians, but Tunisia wasn't completely overrun throughout. But unfortunately for them, Belgium has weapons all over the pitch and on their bench, and after Michi Bashuai came on in the 68th minute for Hazard, he found the back of the net in the 90th. Great ball over the top by Yuri Tielemans, and the sliding finish was a superb from Michi. And I wonder where his future will lie next season. In the 93rd minute, Tunisia grabbed another consolation goal, but the damage had been done. 5-2, and that was the most goals that Belgium have ever scored in a World Cup match. Tunisia have it tough, but they aren't eliminated just yet. If England beats Panama, then both Panama and Tunisia will be eliminated. However, there is some worry for Belgian fans as Hazard, Lukaku, and Mertens all picked up injuries and will be assessed in the next couple of days to see just how bad they are. That's it for the action from today. Tomorrow, my friends, the show goes on. And the show starts with England taking on Panama with an opportunity to not only eliminate the World Cup debutantes, but also cement their place in the next round with a victory. Kane and co played fairly well against Tunisia and were perhaps a bit wasteful with some opportunities, and were unlucky to not have a couple of penalties awarded to them when American football tackles made it into the game by way of Harry Kane. It's funny that the jostling from set pieces and in the box is something that FIFA referees said they would be focusing on cutting out for this tournament, but they sure didn't in England's match, and they sure didn't when Mitrovic was manhandled by two players against Switzerland. Anyways, I reckon England will get it done in this one, and their finishing will be a little bit sharper. I'm sure we'll get a blunder or two finishing wise from Sterling, however. And then maybe he'll score a worldie. Who knows with Raheem Sterling. And then Senegal look to get their second win of the group stage as they take on Japan, who also won their first match of the tournament up against Colombia. That was considered a bit of a surprise, and I think that Japan in general surprised some with how good they looked going forward, as a group, not individually. They weren't overly reliant on any of their prominent players, as made evident by Yuya Osako's Man of the Match performance versus Colombia. Speaking of which, Senegal showed that they are more than just Sadio Mane when they defeated a slow to start Poland. I really liked what I saw from Senegal actually, as their defense looked strong with Koulibaly marshalling the back, and they looked a threat in the attack as well, even without Sadio Mane playing a prominent role in the last match. Niang, while he was wasteful at times, often looked a threat, and I expect him to play a prominent role in this match. And whoever wins this one pretty much secures their place in their knockout rounds. I say pretty much though, not for sure, because it will be dependent on the other match in Group H. Poland and Colombia will both need a win or else their World Cup journey could be finished already. 
Poland, as mentioned before, are typically very slow starters, and they probably would have hoped that they would have an easier opponent to bounce back against. But this is the World Cup and things aren't easy. Robert Lewandowski went missing for the first half against Senegal, but as he got more involved in the second, Poland looked better and better. The reliance on him is a little worrying, but to be expected of any team with a striker like that in their ranks. Colombia, on the other hand, will likely have a fully fit James Rodriguez in their ranks, which will really bolster their attack, as he came off the bench against Japan. Falcao said that before this match, this is like a final for them, and it truly is. The team who wins will be the one who has a good chance of advancing and will have the best chance of keeping their fate in their own hands. But again, that's all dependent on what happens in the other match. And that will be all from me today on day 10 of the World Cup. The second round of matches conclude tomorrow, and then we go to four matches per day as the final group stage matches will be played at the same time. Two groups a day. You know? So there's no chance of shenanigans in the competing teams. Well, a little less chance of shenanigans. So once again, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.